Okay, take 13. I feel the magic coming. Light is a wave. We have been studying this for a few lectures now. We're going to delve into it a little more deeply by talking about polarization. We know from previous talks that light is an electromagnetic wave. Here I've drawn the electric field in yellow, oscillating up and down, and I have drawn the magnetic field in red, oscillating in and out of the screen. If we take the cross product of these two vectors, or these two fields, we get a new vector called S, which is called the pointing vector. The pointing vector tells you the direction of power flow in the light wave. In other words, it tells you the direction the light wave is traveling. And in this case, E cross H would be either to the left or the right. We'll just go ahead and say that it's traveling to the right. Now, if I were to stare head-on at this light wave as it's coming straight from my eye, I would see the electric field oscillating up and down like this. And I would then see the magnetic field oscillating horizontally like this. And the pointing vector would be coming straight at my eye, which is denoted generally like that. The two different parts of the wave, the electric and magnetic field, trace out lines. Because of this, both of those fields are called linearly polarized. More specifically, the electric field here would be called vertically polarized because it is oscillating up and down. And the magnetic field would be called horizontally polarized because it is oscillating to the left and right. If I were to rotate this light wave by 45 degrees, then you would see the light wave oscillate like this in an X instead of a plus fashion. This is still linearly polarized light, but now we generally call it 45 degree polarized light. Light can be polarized in any angle. You can have 72 degree polarized light. That's just what it means. The other common type of polarization is circular, circularly polarized light. And in this case, we are staring at the light head on. That's my pointing vector. And instead of seeing the electric field trace out a line, the electric field traces out a circle as it travels. So in this case, I've drawn it traveling or drawing out a clockwise circle as it travels, which, surprisingly, is called clockwise polarization. Polarization. Hmm, which is also called right-handed polarization. It appears I have done this backwards because the reason you know this is right-handed polarized is because you point your thumb in the direction of the pointing vector and your fingers will curl in the direction of the electric field. This is a bit backwards because my thumb needs to point into the screen in order to be right-handed polarized. So we will redraw the pointing vector as into the screen. Likewise, if the light is rotating in the opposite direction, or counterclockwise polarization, then it is considered left-handed polarization for the same reason. And in this case, the, the pointing vector would also need to be into the screen in order for your left hand to curl properly when you point your thumb in the direction of the pointing vector. 
These are the two most common types. There's also elliptically polarized light. Elliptically polarized, which is nothing but circularly polarized light where the radius of the circle in one direction is not the same as the other, just makes an ellipse. So for instance, the electric field could look something like this, and the magnetic field would look something like this. That's an example of elliptically polarized. Now you might say, why is this important? Sure, you've defined the polarization of light. It's the direction that the light oscillates as it travels. But why do I care? What does it matter? Because I can show you that the light coming from my common incandescent light bulb, here is an incandescent light bulb, is unpolarized. This is unpolarized light. So my everyday life does not include polarized light. You're just, you're talking about things I don't care about. That is somewhat true. This is unpolarized light, just like the sun's light is unpolarized. But there are many good reasons why you do care. And one of them is something that I heavily recommend you invest in if you have not, and that is polarized sunglasses. The reason being is this unpolarized light from the sun comes down and strikes a horizontal surface, like the road or a lake, doesn't matter what it is. And because this surface is horizontal, the light that does not get absorbed and actually comes up to your eye, this is unpolarized light, and this is horizontally polarized light coming from the road. If you have sunglasses with polarizing filters in them, which is just generally a grid of metallic structures sandwiched into plastic, then it can actually filter out horizontally polarized light. Vertically polarized sunglasses will transmit vertically polarized light and reject horizontal. Meaning all of that glare from all of those car hoods and the road and lakes can be filtered out. The other reason it's a snazzy thing to remember is because of liquid crystal displays, LCDs. That's what we use for wristwatches and televisions in order to block and transmit light when we want to. And the way this works is liquid crystal is a material that is crystalline but liquid and when we apply a voltage to it across this LCD its polarization actually changes. So if we shine in vertically polarized light and this is originally vertically polarized then the light will travel straight through. But then if we apply a voltage and this becomes horizontally polarized, then this light will be rejected and no light will come through. And that is how, in essence, all liquid crystal displays work. So there you have it, polarization in a nutshell. The polarization is defined as the direction that the wave is traveling as it moves, or the line it traces out as you look into the wave. I will give you one last little uh, tidbit of information that gets me a lot of odd stares whenever I do it, so I figured I would let you in on my little secret. It, another thing the light from the sun does, which is originally unpolarized, is that when it comes through the atmosphere, it will eventually see an oxygen molecule. 
Oxygen is also the reason the sky is blue, by the way, because it scatters blue light quite efficiently. And when it does that, the light will scatter in these directions. If the light does not scatter, the light will travel straight through. But all of the scattered light, the blue light, will be scattered perpendicular to the direction of travel. Which means this scattered light is polarized in this direction. So if you have polarized sunglasses and you start tilting your head while looking at the sky, you can see this polarized light. And the po direction of polarization will always be perpendicular to where the sun is. So if for some strange reason you either want the sky to look as dark as possible or you want to know where the sun is, just tilt your head until you get the proper degree of polarization. And remember that 99% of sunglasses are vertically polarized because most sources of glare are horizontally polarized. The one big exception to that is skyscrapers. And in that case, you would want horizontally polarized light. The, a trick you can do there, though, since horizontally polarized light isn't, or horizontally polarized sunglasses aren't normally sold, is you can tilt your head 45 degrees. What that does is if the light coming off of a skyscraper is coming at you vertically polarized, and your sunglasses block horizontally polarized, if you tilt your head, to 45 degrees, you will block essentially the cosine of 45 degrees worth of light in both the vertical and the horizontal direction, which equates to 0.7071 or about 70% of the light, in both, the light in both directions, which is pretty effective. But it also means that your head has to be tilted at a kooky angle as you drive. And so now you know why people think I'm such a strange driver.